Welcome to the daily briefing from interest.co.nz. I'm David Chaston. Today we review how our tax levels benchmark internationally. We look at the latest activity on electronic card use, update the rate premiums between New Zealand and the USA, and we'll wrap up with what the other media are reporting. Tax levels are always a talking point, and they're now front and centre in the election campaign in Australia. They'll also no doubt be a big issue at our general election next year. The OECD has just published some useful benchmarks in this area. This covers 30 of the world's most developed economies, and they note that many of the world's governments are taking an increasing share of the wealth produced in each country, even as the wealth production is rising. They're getting a double whammy. But effective rates vary widely between countries. On a total tax basis, the range is from the lowest at 21% in Mexico to the highest levels which exceed 50% in Sweden. The Europeans are much keener on higher taxes than everyone else, and New Zealand stands out as the highest taxing OECD nation outside of Europe, and by some margin. New Zealand is also out of line when the focus has shifted to taxes on consumption. We pay 9% of GDP in such taxes. The Europeans average is only 7.5%. Australia is only 4.1% and the Pacific OECD members average 5.1%. In the Americas, consumption taxes take only 3.7% of GDP. Following the unusual August blip, the September electronic card transaction data was up 7.7% in value compared with the same month a year earlier, more in line with other recent increases. The electronic card transaction series measures the number and value of debit, credit and charge card transactions with New Zealand based merchants. It is a census of all card transactions processed within New Zealand. Transactions by overseas cardholders in New Zealand are included, transactions by New Zealand cardholders overseas are excluded. This latest data still suggests a healthy level of retail sales in September and a buoyancy in the state of the domestic economy. However, it should be remembered that this data reflects not only changes in spending and prices, but also changes in merchants and customers' use of payment methods. The average value of a transaction changed very little in September and remi remains just a tad over $57, where it has been for a long time. As we all know, New Zealand's official interest rate is 8.25% as per the OCR. We have an inflation rate, or rather in September we had an inflation rate, of 1.8%. That makes the effective or real interest rate in New Zealand just a tad below 6.5%. By way of comparison, the same assessment of real interest rates in Australia puts their real rate at just over 4%. A similar comparison for the United States shows their real interest rate at just under 2%. Real interest rates are an effective way to benchmark our situation with others. Clearly investors are much better off by getting much higher fixed interest returns in New Zealand. And these differences are significant. New Zealand investors have a 60% real advantage over Australia and an advantage in interest earnings of more than three times over the US. Clearly, even after lower tax rates in those other countries, we still come out on top. It is little wonder then that Kiwis tend to favour fixed interest returns over al almost all other types of investment other than real estate. And finally today, a quick wrap up of some other recent news. A vote by Geneva finance investors next month to give the company more time to repay them could open the way for other struggling finance companies to follow suit, KPMG says. A surge in crude oil prices to levels not seen since the start of the Iran-Iraq war in 1980 could add unwanted inflationary pressure to the New Zealand economy and could put more pressure on the Reserve Bank to raise interest rates. The IMF has shaved its estimate for Australia's economic growth in 2008 to 3.8% and New Zealand's expansion will slow to 2.3% next year, the fund said in its latest World Economic Outlook released in Washington today. You can get more news and start with Newsmaker Views on our news page. Join us again tomorrow for the freshest finance news on the web. We'll see you then.